everybody. So I've gotten a lot of requests on how I actually do my graphic sample labels. Um, I did a video a while ago um, explaining how I used to do them, but now I do them this way. And a lot of people have expressed interest and told me that they would be um, interested in learning how I do that. So I thought that I would actually just uh, take a video and show you guys how I do it right from the beginning with my next batch that I'm doing up today. So yeah, stay tuned and I'm going to meet you guys on my computer screen and I'm going to show you guys how I actually get the labels done up. And then um, after that I will show you guys how I actually do the bagging. To make these you really don't need much at all. Um, you're obviously going to... You don't need much at all. You're obviously going to want to have um, some samples done up. I don't have any that aren't already packaged, uh, but of course, however you do your samples, you're going to want to have some samples ready to bag and label. Um, then you're going to want to have a stapler, some sort of baggie to put your samples in, and print it yourself business cards. Now, I use the Avery brand business cards just because I find that they're the easiest to use uh, program-wise for people who aren't as tech savvy. Uh, they're also fairly cheap. They come with 250 cards per package uh, for just under $10. And the actual programming for designing the business cards themselves, I find, is very simple. Uh, when they come out, as you can see, they're good quality. And I know that you can't feel them, but it's just the standard cardboard. They're not too thick like um, the actual like Vistaprint business cards, but they're really good for this type of thing. And one thing I do want to point out before we get started is um, no matter what actual version of the business cards you're using, you're going to want to take a look at the number that it has in the corner and in the bottom because each product um, is a different number and you're actually going to need to reference to that number later on in your designing process. So again, just uh, make sure that this number is somewhere where you can easily reference it or you have it memorized before you actually go to start. So your first step is to go into www.avery.com And then you're just going to type in the number to your product up here. So that's that number that I showed you on your packaging. And it'll actually show you the product. So you can click on it. And you're just going to come right down here under the visual of the product that you have. And you're just going to click on design and print online. And what it'll do is it'll have all of the options for the different kinds of layouts for the product that you have. So all of these are going to be the same size, but this one here is going to be the horizontal design and it's going to be just one sided. This one here is going to be the horizontal design and it's going to be double sided. So if you wanted to have a design on the front and the back. These two here are the same. It is the double sided only it is the vertical design. So for these specific labels we're going to be doing the vertical design to make it easier. So we're just going to select the product and once you click on it it's going to bring you here to a bunch of pre-made designs and we don't want any of those for this video, but if you aren't very tech savvy and you don't think you're creative enough, you could always select one of these layouts and just go from there. But like I said, I just selected the blank canvas. So depending on how many samples you're going to be doing of each scent, you can come over here and you can edit all of the labels the same 
or you can edit individually one by one. So for my specific sample, since I'm recycling my testers, I'm going to be making five samples in each scent. So it works out for me that I want one side to be one scent and one side to be another scent. So the way I do that without causing a whole bunch of hassle is I actually just click to edit all of them instead of just editing one. And I will create my design. And then once we're done creating the design, I'll show you my trick for the easiest and quickest way to get the two designs on there to print off on the same sheet. Um, so what I do first is I go down here to shapes. And since I'm going to be doing pineapple punch this time around, I'm going to want to do a yellow label. But depending on the scent that you're doing, you kind of want to color match. So whatever scent you're doing, you want to do the color that matches it for your label color. So what I did was I just went in here to the basic shapes and I got a line. And when it comes in to the design, it will actually come directly into the center, which works out perfectly. So if you see, there's five blocks on the top, five blocks on the bottom. And I'm actually going to make this a six thickness. So you come in here to the numbers and you just make it a six. And then, like I said, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make it yellow. And then the easiest way to do this is to just right click on it and click copy. And then you're going to paste it four times and drag it to the sides of your label. And what this is doing is it's creating the shape for me so that I can easily figure out what is going to be on the back and what is going to be on the front of the label. So I already have my images pre-made for the contact section, so I'm going to do that first. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make yourself an image that displays your contact information. Um, so it would have your website. I'll make this bigger so you can see what I have online. It would have your name and your website and your phone number and all that and how they can order. And so I have that pre-made just to make it easier. And you're just going to want to flip it upside down. And I'm not going to fit it yet because I also have a pre-made design that says, like what you smell, contact me or order online. And I have that in black so that I can also color match that with whatever scent I'm using. And I'll also show you guys how I do that. So I will fit this to the label. And then if you notice that the white is kind of overlapping the text, you can actually come over here and click to set transparent color and click on the white, and that's going to take away your white background. So I do that, fit it, and I usually do it to be about two cubes for this saying. And then I will fit my contact information so that it looks nice. And I'm going to do the same thing with the transparent color. And then, of course, we need our Sensi logo. So I'm going to grab that, flip it upside down, and position that as well.
And then we have this side almost done. And what I'm going to do to change the color of this is I'm just going to come here to change color. And I'm going to take my little brush and click on the black area. So now everything in that black area is going to be changed to the color I choose. And what I usually do is make the color a little lighter than whatever color I have the background as. But because it's yellow, um, I don't want to go any lighter because it probably won't show up. So I'm going to leave it as this yellow. And then on this part, you're going to want to do your scent description. So what you would want to do is you'd want to come in here to text and you'd want to put in the title of whatever your scent is and the description. But for mine, I do um, very graphic um, lettering and stuff like that. And I use my editing program to make um, my designs pre-made. So I'm actually going to come in here to images and I'm going to add um, my image in that way because um, that's just how I do my labels. But again, if, if you don't have like the really graphic lettering and stuff like that like me, you can just uh, make do and write whatever you want and do it that way. So I have um, mine pre-made for this scent already. And I do um, take the time to make my lettering specifically for each sample that I'm going to be doing. And as I make them, I will share them with you guys in the, um, in the description to this video if you like uh, my specific label design. So I don't by any means have all 80 cents done up yet, but as I make samples in cents and make labels, I will add them to the description and have no problem sharing them with you guys. So again, I just add the title and then for the description of the scent, I do use the actual text box. So what I would do for that is I just go to my website and I type in the scent that I'm doing the sample for and then I just copy and paste the description. And if you highlight your text, you can come over here and you can change it. And I always do my descriptions in um, a nice, bold, but plain black font. And you'd want to play around with the sizing to make it fit your design. But since I've done this so many times, I know that um, I want my description to be a size 9. So I'm just going to come down here and fit that. And then again, I always add a nice graphic picture down here of the bar. So you can just save whatever kind of design you want for your bar image. But for mine here, I made up a cute little pineapple um, Scentsy bar. So I'm going to be using that, so I'd add that in there and fit it to the design. Now because of this long stem, it's not fitting as perfectly as the other bars usually do, but that's okay. So I'm just going to put it there. And then I add another text box, and that's where I put the smell me, warm me, just don't eat me. And like I said, I've done this a lot of times, so I know what font I'm going to be using and stuff like that before I even come into it. But you, if you were doing it, you might want to kind of play around with what font works for you and your design. And I always keep this orange just so that it'll be consistent with all of my designs. And then again, I'm going to size this. And since I've done it, I know that it needs to be a size 8. No, 9, sorry. And I'm going to position this down here. And then I just add another small text box and I put wax sample. And 
that is always this shade of purple. And it goes eight. Position that right down here. So then you have your, your outline for your label. And like I said, I'm going to be doing um, a different scent on each row. So what I used to do is I used to do it like this. And then I would come in here to edit one and I would just kind of change up the color in this and replace this with the scent name and scent description for the scent I'm using and add the picture of the bar. And I would do that individually for all five um, and change the colors of the, the border and stuff like that. But I have found it easier this time to now just come in here and actually just completely clear these bottom ones. So I just go down here to the bottom and quickly click the delete button on all of them. So as you can see, I'll have the five of them in the top here. And then what I'll do is I'll actually open up another tab and do the exact same thing. Only when I go to erase, I will erase all the top and I just put my paper through twice. Um, and that makes it way easier. So I actually have it open here with my blueberry cheesecake. So, so I'm ready to show you guys how to print. Your first step is to go up here. Print. And then you're going to click print it yourself. And it's going to prompt you to save the design. Um, I also check off just to print the front of the sheet, mm. but since we didn't have a design on the back, it probably wouldn't matter if you just left it as front and back of the sheet. So you click print now, and I'm not going to save this because I already have everything I need saved. And as soon as you come up here and click to open, it's going to bring up your print preview. So the big thing for this is to make sure, make sure that you do not check off fit to frame um, or whatever. If that box is checked off, you want to uncheck it. If you're using um, the Firefox browser, it's going to do what it's doing here. And it's usually going to check fit first, but I have my preferences changed, so you always want it to print out as actual size. So I'm going to click print, and as you can see, I have my card paper in there, and we're ready to print the first side. And once that first side prints out, you're going to want to put it back in. And then you're just going to open up your second graphic and then do the same thing with the preview and print. Um, just select the one side, go up to print it yourself, uh, print now, and then it will print this design as well. I'm gonna start printing right away. And then as you can see, we have two rows of different scents. So while I wait for my samples to set, I usually do this part to get my labels all ready. So what you actually wanna do is of course you want to break off the edges of the cards. And then separate the two cents by going in half. And then of course you just want to individualize each label. So you'll have 
card like um, scent labels. So what I do then is I just take each one and just fold it right in half on the blue line. And I do it enough so that there's a little bit of blue at the top on each side. Of course I just do that with all 10 labels. We now have all 10 of our labels ready for when the samples sit. So as soon as my samples are hard enough to take out of the mold, I will meet you guys back here and just kind of show you um, the quick and simple way to get these um, onto your bag and get them um, doing what they're supposed to do and labeling your samples. Okay, so my samples are finished and I have my labels here, my baggies, and the stapler. So what you're going to do first is of course you want to get your samples in the bag. So I'm just going to quickly do that. So once you have your bagged samples, um, you're ready to get them labeled. So your first step is to obviously grab your label and your bag and where you folded your label, you're just going to line that right up with the center of the sample. And where I left um, a free space down at the bottom, you just take your stapler and staple it shut. And then you have your sample with um, your description on the front and your contact information on the back. So yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if you did, remember to share with your downline and give this video a like. And I'm going to get off to labeling the rest of these samples and then getting them passed out.